Oh, hi, I'm Steve from iHire, President and CEO. Who was a leadership mentor or role model who inspired you and why? I'm going to go with Donald Burdett. Uh, he is the owner and president of a local car dealership that I used to work at as a teen. My father, Eddie, started working at the dealership when he was probably 16 or 17 years old. And Donald has been in my father's life, uh, both on a business and a personal um, side throughout the entire time frame. Donald Burdett is a blue-collared guy. He's very humble. Um, he's a straight shooter, and he cares about his people. And so when I was a little kid, seeing my dad's boss, so to speak, um, always around and supportive, and then later I worked for him, um, and later I'd come back you know, as a mentor just to check in on him and see how he was doing and kind of uh, seek advice. And there was just such a calm and confident presence uh, from him. So I'd have to go with Don Burdett. What has surprised you about the leadership role you're in? So I've been in this leadership role since December of 2015. And prior to that, I was leading the technology operations and the product strategy of the company that I'm with today, I hire. I had a great network of friends um, and coworkers, and I'm, I believe I was well respected when I was asked to take on the, the ultimate leadership position during that time, it was a very tumultuous time for the company. Uh, we had just suffered a major reduction in force and a layoff and, and the outlook didn't appear to be bright. So I kind of inherited um, a situation that was viewed as pretty tough by all that were around. The surprise for me was the day that it was communicated that I was going to be taking over leading the company as president. I came in and people were very different around me right away. Um, I, I was just amazed that from an authority standpoint, even, even coworkers that are, I would consider and I operate as peers with them around the table, uh, that Im implied authority um, was evident. And it actually took me back uh, for a couple of weeks, I didn't like it uh, at, at first, but I think I grew to realize, um, and here comes the, you know, the lesson for me, is people need leadership. Uh, they, they need to have someone to go to in the business context. They need to be led from a vision standpoint. They need, they need support and help. Um, and I immediately became that figure. Uh, so at first, I, I kind of took it as more of a hierarchical, kind of an about face sort of uh, change, but really it, it was more the former. What has been one of your best leadership decisions? Why and what was the impact? My best leadership decision. Um, focus on people. I think focus on people. I, I early in my career as a software engineer and as an architect, I took a lot of pride in my technical skill and my ability to write algorithms, uh, implement projects. Um, at the highest level, it, it really becomes about managing people and leading people, supporting people, and choosing the right talent. I often uh, have an engineer, and they're usually young, and they get really frustrated with communicating with the product manager or trying to implement strategy and then the, the business you know, changes course, and um, and they profess how difficult it is to write to write software. And I, I remind them that really there's nothing more challenging than trying to get dozens of people rowing the boat all in the same direction, working well together. Uh, the human mind is is infinitely more complex than any algorithm we have out there at this point. Getting folks to work together is really tough. So I would say lessons learned is focus on focus on my people and let them you know, do their best uh, work. What has been one of your worst business decisions? Why and what did it teach you? <laughs> um, worst business decisions. Uh, that's a tough one. So I think 
so far in my responses is a lot about people and managing talent and culture. When the COVID pandemic came out, it was incredibly disruptive to our business. Our sales dropped by about 70% overnight. The economy shut down, no one was hiring. We had really an amazing response from a staff standpoint. When uh, hiring did return about six months later, at the same time, talent shortage increased dramatically, which was good for us from a business standpoint. Internally, from a culture standpoint, uh, the demands from staff continued to mount, continued to increase, more pay, more time off, don't want to return to the office, more flexibility, more accommodations. And I saw that we were, we were as a, from a management team, really uh, scared to lose staff members. Most companies were having a hard time with talent retention. Uh, job seekers were hopping all around. Our talent retention was uh, really second to none during that time frame. However, we didn't hold the line with striking the right balance of what the business needs and what accommodations staff um, should expect, uh, what compensation changes staff should expect. Um, we had a little internal phrase for it where, you know, are we becoming the land of never know, where we never say no to staff. Uh, we've since corrected that and it's taken probably 12 to 14 months to slowly unwind some of the accommodations, uh, hold the line on expectations for continuing to get raises and salaries, uh, getting culture back more to really on a results and impact, business impact basis, as opposed to tenure or just showing up. Um, that's probably one of the larger mistakes that I've made in the career so far and I'm now at this point, certainly more um, top of mind when it comes to managing expectations and striking the right balance of what's in it for the employee, what, what's in it for the business, what does the business need. What excites you about the future of your company and business in general? So what excites me about the future of the company? At this point, iHire has had a very tough year, one of the worst that we've had on record and we're not alone with my peers and comp direct, com direct competitors, uh, actually we're, we're faring better. So there's a lot to be thankful for, um, but it's still a somewhat of an unclear future. What excites me the most is we've invested so significantly in the technology platform and our operations and processes. I feel like we're very efficient. I'm confident that we're very efficient. I'm very confident in the technology. Uh, and I'm also very excited about the core staff that we have. Um, I believe the combination of the strength of that technology and the, and the products themselves plus the core talent that we have can, can really um, help us you know, continue to wait, weather the storm and to kind of punch through um, this, this next chapter in our history, um, even if we do hit a recessionary type climate here in 2024. So it's back to the core technology and the, and the core people at the firm. And then finally, do you have any advice for an aspiring entrepreneur? Advice for an aspiring entrepreneur. Uh, my advice is to create psychological safety. So you can only take it so far as an individual leader. You can be brilliant and you can be driven. You can invest um, ungodly amounts of time in your week and create a lot of contribution to the company. And if you're just a one person company or a few, few person uh, company, then that's going to be fine. That, that will work. That's probably how a lot of entrepreneurs start where they're in a much smaller setting and they're an outlier when it comes to performance and intellect and capability. If you want to get to the point of growing a company and actually scaling a company to go to 10 employees, dozens of employees, at one point I've had over 100 employees, you have to create a foundation of psychological safety within the staff. Your team has got to feel safe and comfortable around the table to challenge the leader. Going back to you know the earlier comments about this implied, you know, it's, this authority is a default when you're in this position. 
Uh, so by really focusing hard on, on psychological safety, you're going to get the best out of your people. You're going to get their best ideas. You're going to be challenged um, with your thoughts on strategy or vision. You're going to need that to have a, a, a growing, sizable company. Um, keep in mind that that psychological safety is really hard to get to, uh, but it's very easy to have it slip. So oftentimes you, you can take two steps back and you got to have to double down to take one step forward. So uh, in order to help keep progressing and maintaining that, I would say remain humble as a leader. Uh, make sure that you communicate your failures. So I, I, I actually work um, hard and, and, and very intentional about when I think something is going to go, you know, this way, but it turns out to go that way. And I, I wanna, I'm one of the first that says I was wrong about that. Really, you know, really thought that was going to work, but it didn't. I'm sorry, team. You know, I'll apologize. I'll highlight when I'm wrong. I need to bring that uh, human nature to myself, and that way others feel feel comfortable doing the same instead of sweeping things under the rug and not voicing their opinion, not not collaborating and sharing uh, what's in their mind to help forward the business. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you.